NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all three, all things North Jersey basketball. And Joe, I'm a little tongue-tied over here because we got so much to get to. I just want to cut all the small talk, dive in, because we have so much good stuff on this edition coming up. Are you excited about it, Joe Del Buto? I am excited about it, absolutely. Uh, we're getting new guys that have uh, that have emerged in the uh, in all county. The young guys that are getting a chance to coach. Uh, I'm going to focus in on. Um, we talked to Nick about how uh, uh, the, the schools are also uh, and the coaches are coming from the girls' ranks, coming over to the boys. So let's let's hit it and get it in stride. Yes, the Nick you mentioned is Nick DeBarry, the head coach of the Rutherford Boys basketball team. He will join us on the show. Great. We got Kevin Kirkby, the head coach of the Pascac Hills Boys basketball team, will join us on the show. We have a great interview to play that you did earlier in the week with Riverdale head coach Ronnie Van Saders. Uh, they had a wacky week. They beat Mawa in a great win for them, come from behind victory. Lost to Pascac Hills, leading by double digits in the fourth quarter, lost in overtime. So it's going to be interesting to hear that. Uh, we got stuff on the Rutherford 1985 state championship team, which was honored at the game on Saturday. I have an interview with Tom Poder, uh, the former Rutherford boys basketball coach, to play regarding that. And also, Jeff Kohler will be back on tape because I was at the game when uh, Tenafly came back to beat Old Japan in overtime. I have had a great week of basketball, two overtime games a 34-30 win with Rutherford the other day. And I just want to say this, before we dive into the heart of this show, Joe, Hmm. every coach out there must come on this show. I just want to point a couple of things out. We've had three on live in the first three weeks of the show. Jeff Kohler, Tenafly, 5-3, making a push for the Jambo. Jim Holsworth, assistant coach at Passaic Valley, they're 6-1 and one or 7-1 and one playing as well as any public school team in North Jersey right now. And last week we had Aaron Taylor on. And what did they do this week, Joe? They knocked off number uh, T-neck in a great head-to-head game. Yes. So my our message to coaches out there, you want to be on this show. You <laughs> yeah, need luck, to be on this show. Yes. <laughs> Talking hoops on NorthJerseySports.com. We got it all covered. And we're going to get to the big boys as the season moves on. I mean, obviously – Bergen Catholic is doing great things. Don Bosco Prep doing great things. Uh, Teaneck, despite the loss, still deserves, you know, uh, they're, they're still the champ in Bergen Hey, Canyon. let's not so forget much. Joe, Joe Sandberg's doing a great job over at Rampo. They're, they're doing pretty good themselves. They just had a big win against Lincoln, if I'm not mistaken. No doubt, yes. They had a big win against Lincoln. And uh, Northern uh, Ireland. Ireland is doing well. We're going to get to all those guys. But those teams are going to be in the jambo. So we're going to see the fun part of this part of the season for me is that we get, I get to go to that next level, to the teams that are striving to make the Jambo, to the ones that are 500 right now or a game or two over, where every game means something because, you know, the postseason, even though the season is three weeks old, the postseason really has already started because every one of these games count. Absolutely. Absolutely. And with the expanded uh, state tournament uh, play, this every game is important for the seeding in, in the state tournament play. And, again, you know, not that I want to uh, – I bring it up, but if you don't make the Jambo to get prepared for the state tournament, we're going to have the Bergen Invitational Tournament. So that's one of the nice things about, um, you know, the expanded tournament play that, that's available to uh, teams and coaches to get them get their teams ready for the season. So let's let's go right at it. All right, Joe. Well, let's fire it up now here as we welcome in our first guest. And before I introduce him properly, I should say that we, you know, I, I was setting up the interview. I was doing my due diligence, you know, pre-planning for the show and. We discussed some play in music. Now, Nicky DeBarry, DeBarry is just about my age. He's from my era, and he's from the same part. He's a upper Hudson County guy while I'm a lower Bergen County guy. So, you know, some of the play in music that we discussed was probably not suitable for this family show that we call Talking Hoops here. So here's the best that I can do, and I set this up only because the tradition of Rutherford basketball is back uh, and I want to set the mood a little bit. Are you ready? Okay. Come on, Nicky. Sing it if you know it. <laughs> Where did you find this? <laughs> Come on, let it play out. This is a good Wow. 
How great is that? Nick DeBarry, the Rutherford head coach. What's going on, Nicky D? Not much. Just, uh, you know, playing well. Just trying to get better every day. That's it. He's got a good thing going right now. So just Yeah, congratulations on your, se- on your season so far, Nick. It's, uh, it's really good Thank to see that. Very nice. Very, very good. Nicky, yeah. seven and two, you know, and you, we're going to talk about it later. Guys making the switch from girls basketball over into the back onto the boys basketball side. You did it three years ago, six and seventeen last year. Uh, you know, this year you turned it around. I talked to you before the season started. You had guarded optimism. What's been the biggest thing here? Seven wins in nine games after losing your first two and now winning seven in a row. Um, you know, I, we got real steady play at the point. Um, our point guard, Dominic Mignon, has been a real steady, you know, unflappable presence. Um, you know, that helps. Um, you know, our younger kids, all these kids are back from last year's team. You know, we only really right. lost one kid from our rotation last year. Um, so all these kids are a year older. You know, year stronger. They got a year's experience, and it, it shows. I mean, last year was you know we were like a JV team playing varsity, and we would be right. in games and we would just you know find ways not to win them. And you know, this year the difference is, is you know we learned from last year. You know, whatever happened, we learned from it, and and now we're closing teams out. So that's the biggest difference. You know, yeah, and yet, oh, go ahead, Joe. you know, every once in a while, thinking back, every once in a while, um, you look through your season. Since uh, coach brought up the fact that you were zero uh, and two, and then now you're on a seven game uh, win streak. Is is there a moment, or was there a game that you felt uh, the switch turned on to the team, and that hey, you know what, we can do this, and that we can go to another level, and we can get on this win streak. Yeah, I mean, well, two part, there's two parts to that. One, when we were 0-2, we lost our second game to Pompton Lakes. As coaches, we looked at it and said, you know, we're in foul trouble. The way they're calling the game this year is a little bit different. They're calling a hand check. Right. And we were picking up at half court or full court, and we turned around and said, like, you know, what are we really getting from this? You know, what we're getting is kids picking up fouls. We're not generating turnovers. And our and our the kids we need on a quarter are on the bench. So, since that pump and legs game, the first thing that we did as coaches is we said, okay, you know, we're calling the 20-foot defense. We're just picking you up on the three-point line now. And and that's right. helped our program. Now, as far as the, the kids and when that, that aha moment was, um, you know, when we beat Queen of Peace, that first win, because Queen of Peace had come in at that time with a, with a lot of hype. They had a couple transfers come in. Um, and, and we, we were playing with him in that halftime. He said, guys, you know, we can get this. We can get this today. This is our day. And sure enough, you know, we were able to win that. And then from there, it just seemed like things started falling our way. And, and I think that first win was the one that we needed. Because, you know, we needed that first one just that, for this group. Yeah. And you know what? You say Queen of Peace, too. And I didn't even realize that that was win number one. But... Uh, Rutherford, you kind of surrounded a little bit. You got Queen of Peace to your south there. You got St. Mary in town. You know, coached by one of your best friends in the world. Yep. Uh, you know, so it, it's it, the public school trying to you know keep its chin up there, and and that's a big win, really. Yeah, it was it was, it was a quality win for us. Um, we had played them twice last year, um, and we had lost twice last year, and they were at one of those losses. Were one of those games at the end where we just kind of figured out a way to lose it. Um, and yep. We lost it at the buzz. You know, we lost it at the buzzer. Our ball. Um, we got a great look on the block that just rolled out for the win. Um, you know, those kind of things last year. Just the ball didn't go in last year. Right. You know, and it's, it's just it's funny. They're confident, and suddenly the ball. You know, like the breaks just kind of be happening. You know, things are happening our way now. And Saturday is a perfect example of that because that's a 34-30 game against Bergen Tech, who both Joe and I have seen and really appreciate the effort that that team puts out uh, on a night-in, night-out basis, playing a, a schedule that's way above their head. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, you know, and you you found a way through it to win 34-30 on the day when you bring back the 1985 state championship team. It really felt like uh, it was uh, there's a special feeling going on in Rutherford right now. It, it was a great day. Um, you know, the, probably the day earlier we had brought in uh, one of those members to talk to our kids. Um, Andre Carriers came in and talked to our kids and just had a great conversation about, you know, the first part of it was he was talking about playing with his friends, the kids he grew up with. 
and how excited he was to get to get to see his friends tomorrow, you know, on yesterday. Um, and they were going to get together, and they were going to have good times and tell stories. And he just talked about camaraderie and friendship. And then, you know, it was it was kind of special because you know usually the kids don't understand what they what they're experiencing until well after it's gone. You know, yes. as as old timers we know, you know, just yes, you know, one more day I'd love to be back. You know, um, and yeah, then, but you know, be careful, Mickey, because you could be going up against a kid from Pal Park named Corey Doviak who might throw you into the first row. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> One guy versus you. I'll take it. <laughs> you know what? Uh, right. I do want to touch ahead, that, I want to touch something that Nick mentioned, that quality win, okay? And uh, and that you mentioned it with the Queen of Peace because of uh, that was your first win. But then um, and the fact that the, the, the players are aware of who they're going up against, probably more than what we've given, given them credit to uh, over the years, I would think that they yes. do know who they're going up against. And then again, uh, against Bergen Tech, which I don't know whether our listeners know um, uh, how well Bergen Tech is, has improved over, over the last uh, year or two, but their their guards are um, are exceptional, and I think their big man is starting to get better. So, um, But that's what I mean. I think you, you hit the nail on the head. It'd be one thing if you had a win, it wasn't against the quality team, but but Queen of Peace and and certainly now with Bergen Tech and and other games that you've had during the seven seven uh, game run, um, it's just going to make everything better. Are they still young? Are you still young, or are they senior? Are you, the rest of your team seniors? No, we you know the kids. You know we have four seniors in our rotation right now. Um, we're starting two of them. Um, one broke his wrist, so he's kind of out. Um, and we bring a senior off the bench, so we're still somewhat young, you know. Okay. Uh, you know, and we're still growing, we're still learning. Great. Uh, Nick, I, I, I want to wanna... hit on that other topic now, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. so you, this is a proving ground. You've had a proving ground with uh, four other coaches that come to our minds. Uh, it's almost as though you have a um, a fraternity within the group of boys basketball. You have. Uh, I have Ozzy Osbourne. He went from the girls to the boys over at uh, Dwight Englewood, or excuse me, yeah. Dwight Marlow. You have Bill Brannick that uh, uh, went from the girls to the boys in, at Mawa, and uh, certainly this year uh, a, a big transition from Jeff Kohler uh, and successful. Jeff Kohler went from girls to boys at Tenafly. Do you guys talk to one another? Is there still this uh, fraternity within a group? Where, um, or, I talk to Jeff quite often, yeah. Me and Jeff have been tight since our days in the American together. Um, you know, and I, I still talk to other guys that I had coached against, you know, in the BCSL American on the girls' side. Um, you know, I, I'll still talk to Dave Sapulti often. Um, yeah, oh, we, boy, that's <laughs> <laughs> We do talk. Yeah. And what does he tell you? Shoot the three, Nikki. Shoot the three. Dave wants yeah, Dave just says well, you know, why bother covering everybody? Just shoot the ball more. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, getting back to uh the eighty five team, you know, interesting too, uh, the, Joe, and you know him, the guy on uh next sitting next to Nikki, Tom Porter, he was the head coach at Rutherford for a long time, coached a lot of good Rutherford teams, including a lot of the ones that uh beat Pal Park's brains in, in the many games that I played there. So uh, he, he's on Nikki's bench, and Nick, I think that's important too because you get a guy like that who's been through it, who's seen it, who loves Rutherford basketball, and that's got to be a big help. I wanted Tommy from from the day that the conversation started coming up, um, you know, that I would be, you know, the boys' coach. Um, you know, there were there were three people that were that were available for the job, and I knew right from the get that I wanted Tommy right by me. You know, because like you said, Tommy had been there. Tommy's kind of experienced it all. Um, you know, Tommy's teams back in the day were excellent. And and to make that transition for me, I just thought I needed him there because he had been through it already. And, and he's coached at that level at Wonderford, right? He's, he was a freshman coach as well in the past years. Uh, yeah. Tommy, yes. As well as Marty yes. coach. Yeah, so well, Tommy was the freshman coach um, prior to me taking over. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's been around the block. And the reason I bring him up, too, is because – I caught up with him as part of that, um, you know, 1985 30th anniversary celebration down there on Saturday. And while we have you on the line, I want you to listen to the interview I did with him, too, because he brings up a lot of good points, and he speaks nicely about you. So maybe he doesn't say it to you face-to-face, but he did say it into my recorder. So here, here we go. 
What were you doing in 1980? I was graduating college at that point, uh, but I had played with these kids all growing up. And Tom Sicarius came by our practice yesterday and spoke to the kids for about a half hour. And he just talked about how the, the family of Rutherford, how it's that he looked up to players like myself and other guys when he was growing up. And, you, know, you know, this Rutherford talk makes my skin crawl. You do know that. I right? do know. <laughs> you know and, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to be a professional journalist in this situation. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, just about how we helped those guys progress through the ranks when they were younger in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and let them come and join, you know, the, the kids that were 19, 20, 21 years old and play in the, in the playground at the time. Yeah. You know, something that they don't do anymore. Right. You know, so um, that was my connection at that, at that point with those guys, just to, you know, introduce them to the game of basketball on the playground. And how about now being on the bench with Nicky? You know, it kind of a resurgence of Rutherford Yeah, basketball. you know, it, it took us, when Nick took the job over uh, three years ago, we had a three-year plan, you know, and, and we said, listen, we want to make some noise in the third year. And, you know, we're starting to make some noise. Um, having a seven-game winning streak is, is real nice. Is that right? You started rolling two? Yeah, throwing two. So now we got seven games in a row. So it's, you know, the winning attitude. I keep talking to the kids about how good it feels not only to win, but coming to school with a winning attitude and walk around being positive. So uh, the kids feel good about themselves, and we just got to keep rolling. Having those guys back, besides their class acts, so 85 team. I mean, you got three guys that went to Columbia out of the starting five. Wow. Uh, which never happens. They didn't, Columbia, no Ivy League school takes three guys. Yeah, from one school, let alone school. three basketball players. But, you know, Scarius and, and Shannon play basketball there, and, and Zielinski played football. You know, and Dave Brooks goes to Fairleigh Madison and scores a thousand points there, and Jack Sullivan went to uh, Ithaca. So, I mean... So all five guys went yeah, on to play college ball. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You know, and uh, they're just a tre tremendous group that, you know, they come back, I run our Hall of Fame, and they come back um, to the dinners, and they just, you know, speak to everybody, and, and just, it's nice having them around, because they're just class acts, you know, we don't mind doing anything for, for people like that. All right, the, I told Frazier already, the 80-90, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you coming. Nikki, I ain't coming back for the 80-90 I wouldn't come back I, wasn't either, kidding. I played against those guys, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all I need to see is Ryland Bachelor telling me how he hit me for 20 you times. Don't I don't need that. You don't need it. <laughs> but, you know what, I think Tom sums it up there. Things are going well now, and the link to the past, Rutherford, baseball town, basketball town, it's been that way forever, and it's good to see you guys back thanks, and doing thanks. well. Thanks, You know, we had, um, you know, over the break, you know, we had practice one, you know, we had practice one morning, and um, Jay Cuny stopped in, and Jay Cuny was – the first thousand point scorer in, in the history of Rutherford. And he I think he, he was a varsity coach for one or two years there. And it was amazing. Like he, he was in the area, he he was in Rutherford visiting people, and he was passing a building and he just figured like, Oh heck, it's it's Tuesday morning, you know, somebody's gotta be in the gym and he popped in and sure enough it was us. And, you know, that is kind of the feel of the community, is that, you know, like when the guys leave, like the former players you know, even once you're affiliated with the program, there's always some kind of connection. And I think it's like that everywhere, you know, and that's the beauty of high school sports. Yep. I agree with you 100%. I mean, that's what it's all about because, you know, you know, 20 years from now, these kids will not remember wins and losses. They'll remember, you know, who, who picked their nose yeah. on the bus and, you know, uh, all, all that. And I had asked those guys thing. yesterday, so. like we had a little luncheon after the game, and I had said to them, you know, hey, you know, where are you guys headed to now? And, you know, they were at the same time. It was like, yeah, Park Tavern. We're all going to Park Tavern. And, you know, that's the piece. <laughs> Where Brian Gassione has yeah, a yeah, that, you know, that's the piece of places. Uh, you know, like, well, it's right over the tracks. But, you know, they're going to go there and, and, you know, have food and drink and tell stories, you know. And I'm sure the stories are a little bit bigger and better. <laughs> slogan, if you want, for your, your team, if you're into slogans. So the return of Rutherford in basketball, I think, is uh, – is really a highlight of this theme for this um, for your program, the return yep. of Rutherford. So good luck for the rest of the season from my end. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Yeah, Nick DeBarry. Yeah, listen, NorthJerseySports.com is back in the house too, so something's going on. <laughs> something's going right. You know, there. that's when you know things are going well, and suddenly you start snooping around again. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki DeBarry, the Rutherford head coach, doing good things down there. Below Route 4, who says I don't go down below Route 4? I return to my roots every now and again, 
And thanks for joining us here on Talking Hoops, pal. You know, I always like Great, guys. Up. Thanks. Have a good day. All right, Joe. Well, we go from one good story in Bergen County boys basketball to another one, and this one's been going on for quite a long time here, as we welcome in the all-time New Jersey State leader in winning percentage for a head coach in state sectional championship tournaments. <laughs> We welcome in Pascal Kills, Kevin Kirkby. How's that for an introduction, pal? That's that's uh, definitely a lot more than I was expecting. Thanks for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Joe, how about this? He's been in the state sectional tournament three times. Oh, three? Four. Four, four, four in a row. Has not lost a game yet in the state sectional tournament, Joe. Can you match that? You can't get better than perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Although there was, they did miss a free throw, I think, one game I was at, which – I think bothered uh, Coach Turkey. So, Kev, let's let's jump in here. Listen, I've been covering this Pascal Kittles beat for a few years now, and you know when I showed up to the gym the other day, first time I've seen you this year against Riverdale. Before the game, there was one mood, and then after the game, it was a completely different mood. You guys wiped out a double-digit deficit in the fourth quarter. You came back to beat Riverdale on Riverdale's home court in overtime. You got to four and three on the season. That's a big swing. You could have been three and four. Uh, just talk about the energy that you guys picked up from that win. Yeah, that was uh, that was definitely a, a big win for us. Um, you know, we've, we, we've you know we had three losses. We played we played Mala opening night, and they played very well um, and beat us in our own our own uh, court. And then we lost to West Milford, who's been playing very well. And uh, you know, they're, they're definitely a better team than their record shows. Um, you know, they got a couple tough losses when they went down to Florida, and then we lost to Ridgewood, who only has one loss this year. So. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get, getting that win is big for us. Um, you know, for for a bunch of reasons, for the states, for the Jambo, potentially for the league. Um, you know, so de- definitely, you know, early in the game, I was not too happy, and uh, you know, we, we somehow pulled it out. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, you got a, so much of high school basketball and so much of basketball in general, obviously, is guard play. And when you got kids, I know you're missing Steve Steiger, and that's an injury, a kid that you lost for the year, and that's going to hurt you because he was a you know a lockdown defender. But when you have a point guard like Zach Bernstein, when you got a shooting guard like Evan Schumer, when you have a third guard like Evan Lazarus, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do. You know, if you just don't get pounded on the boards by 20 and you can play possession by possession, you got to feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, uh, you know, all, all three of those guys you mentioned definitely, uh, you know, they're able to handle the ball. You know they're they're calm under pressure. You know they can all shoot. Uh, you know even though Lazarus hasn't been shooting the ball very well recently, and, and Bernstein really hasn't been either. But you know I, I, that's that's what kind of excites me a little bit. Is we haven't shot the ball that well this year, and you know I think the best is still to come for us. But uh, yes. and then to be able to bring two kids off the bench, you know, who are sophomores, who you know uh, Jason Chill, who showed you know obviously single handedly pretty much brought us back against Riverdale, and then uh, Nick Gillamine, who's a sophomore also, who you know was probably our best player over the summer and in the fall. So, you know, we did do, we can, you know, we can strut five guards out there. You know, I wouldn't play them all at the same time, but, uh, right. you know, any of them can have the ball in their hands at any time. And I'm, and I'm confident that, you know, they'll be able to score and make the right decision and, and that. So, yeah. Joe, you got one. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about uh, looking at past cat kills and, and, and the great runs you've had. It's almost like magic. What, You're not getting them in the BIT, Joe. No, I know, I know. <laughs> the Jambo and the uh, and the states. Uh, you know, it's, it's like you guys are creating a you know a team chemistry by you have a great staff that goes along with uh, helping and teaching. You guys do a great job coaching your your players, and uh, you know I thought that that was that's significant in what you've been able to do year in year out there. Um, you know, would you agree with that? That it's uh, that it's great. Yeah, team no, it's, I I have the I I you know, I think I have the best staff around. I mean, to have you know, a guy like Michael Bryan, you know, in practice every day as my JV coach, who's you know an absolute legend, and uh, you know he like I always say he's forgotten more than I know, and yeah. uh, and he knows obviously a lot more than he's forgotten. But uh, you know, just a little, you know, he brings the old school approach to things, um, you know, and then my brother who you know comes and volunteers when he can. You know, I still I still say I'm the least qualified of the three guys who are on my bench at all times between him, uh, Ob, and myself. And uh, you know, and, and Justin Jasper, who's our freshman coach, you know, obviously his name says enough for you know with with what his dad does. But no you know, he's been our, he's been our freshman coach. You know, this is our this is his fourth year, and he gets the kids prepared. He you know he teaches them you know what we want him to teach them, and he gets the kids to play hard and try to buy into our system at a young age too. So when they come up to us as sophomores, you know, there's there's not the having to reteach things. So. Yeah. You know what the the great thing about your program is too is that 
at least in the last couple of years, you've been lucky enough to have the younger brothers. You know what I mean? Like, you, you don't have to teach them the tradition of Pascal Kills basketball or what's expected, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, we mentioned Jason Schill. He was brilliant for you in the second half the other night against Riverdale. He's a sophomore. His older brother, uh, Jared, was a 1,000-point scorer for you, great player, you know, as part of all these uh, championship teams. And, and uh, Evan Lazarus, same thing. His brother Jordan just graduated last year. So they come right in having – you know, watched every game you've played over the last five, six, seven years. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then they come yeah. in, now they're expected to pick right up, and they do. Yep. It's uh, it's, it's kind of funny. And, it, and it, it was even the case, though, when my brother was there, you know, he had the, the Lamperts, you know, uh, Jason and then uh, Evan. Uh, yep. You know, it's kind of one of those things that goes on. You know, Hill, it kind of seems that, you know, that the, you know, he had the Friedbergs also. It's kind of one of those things that, you know, a couple, you know, the, the parents seem to have two two boys who, or three boys who can all play, and, you know, they all kind of, you know, follow along, you know, and the younger ones know exactly what, 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 what's expected of them and, you know, the tradition that's been built there. So it's good. Kevin, yeah. a lot of them are multiple sport athletes. Is that correct? Uh, they, they definitely used to be. And it's more now is, you know, Evan Lazarus is the soccer goalie. Um, and Zach Broadman, who's a kid who kind of plays JV and varsity, he, he plays lacrosse. Other than that, now the, the group I have right now are actually just all basketball players. Oh, okay. That's a change. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and we, we had this conversation before. I mean, you got the, what is it, the Boys and Girls Club or a YMCA in town that seems to have, you know, helped change, you know, that culture a little bit. Everybody's inside all year long playing basketball. Yeah, there's the, the Y, which is in Washington Township, which is where, uh, you know, a lot of the kids go to play. And then, yep. you know, they, they just built that ridiculous lifetime fitness um, in Montvale, which a lot of the kids are members at, too, so they go and play there. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know, in the summertime when it's nice out, they're all down at the courts in Montvale playing against a lot of kids from New York and stuff like that, yeah. you know, who come who come in. So, I mean, they, you know, they live and die for basketball, which, you know, makes my life easier. I don't, I don't have to drag them out onto the courts and say, hey, guys, come on, let's go work out. You know, they're already there probably, so. Joe, sounds like Lifetime Fitness, a, uh, somebody we got to go after for advertising here on Talking Hoops, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's where that old-time, uh, that's definitely old-time uh, school and and probably OB could probably talk more about that with you, and I'm sure you did it as well, because I know you were a multiple sport athlete as well as your brother, and 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 certainly yeah. had a great history. Um, that you just going out, going to the park, and and having game pick up games. I mean, that's not necessarily uh, commonplace. I, I don't think in uh, in in most uh, regional school areas. I would think. You know, yeah, with, with, especially with the development of video games in the past couple of decades. You know, kids want to stay at home and play their Halo and whatever that the video games are. And, uh, you know, our kids just stay where they want to play hoops. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, a timeout, you know, end of games, timeout, stuff like that. You know, we do team on six, team on three, family on six. You know, that's what the kids, what the kids started four years ago. And it, it's kind of become that. I mean, we are family off the court and on the court. Uh, you know, I mean, we had, for example, a JV game yesterday and that, uh, tournament um over Cresskill and you know I don't even have to mention anything to the varsity kids and you know, a bunch of the varsity kids come over to support them you know it, it's just they they just want to be a part of everything whether it's a, supporting the JV the freshmen you know the freshmen supporting the varsity I mean you know our kids you know I don't require the freshman kids to come back to watch the varsity games but the majority of them do you know right. they, they want to see what's going on well I, you know, I and, and uh your your uh fan support. We talk about the magic of, uh, I, I, I want to call it the magic of uh, Pascal Kills. I think that uh, it's it's known throughout the county about not only your home field advantage with your fans, but when your fans travel. Your fans travel. A compliment because it's year in, year out. Compliment to you, the, the staff, uh, the people at the school, the support that's there. I mean, uh, you know, it could be a show unto itself, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I really believe that. I think it's been. It, you're talking about a six man. It's that group. Yeah, yeah. and it's also cost Kevin a lot of uh, extra credit points that he's had to give out. <laughs> yeah, they they are. Uh, you know, they're they're very loyal. Uh, you know, they 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 call themselves the Cowboy Crazies, and uh, you know, they 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 love coming out and supporting the kids, and you know. And like you said, it, it makes it tough, you know, tough to come in and play sometimes at our place. You know, I've, I've had you some of the coaches make comments, and, like, you know, the kids are looking at them, you know, when they're, you know, the coach is talking to them before the game starts, and he just hears the kids hooting and hollering at them, you know, from across the court, and it's like a, it's almost almost going to be, you know, a four or six-point, you know, head head start 
<laughs> type of thing. But. Yep. Yeah, Kev, getting back to, to the season at large here, I mean, you know, you, you had the rough start. You, you get back to over 4-3, and three, and, you know, as we were talking after the Riverdale game, we didn't even realize that Ramsey had lost that night. So you guys play Ramsey on Tuesday, and, you know, that's a, another huge game in terms of trying to qualify for the Jamboree uh, and also, you know, this league race because although there's not that many teams in the league, there are no bad ones. Yeah. No, the, the league's very competitive this year. Um you know, and and we we have a you know we, our next three three four games are, are tough. We have uh, you know this week we have Ramsey Tuesday, and then we got invited to play in the Dan Finn Classic next Saturday, um, and uh, you know we we got Brighton High School from Massachusetts, which is you know no slaps. They they they, they play a national schedule. They play CBA in their holiday tournament. You know they're they're going to be a very tough game also. And then right after that on Tuesday we got Dwight Morrow who just knocked off Ramsey. So. But, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those, you know, I mean, Dwight Morrow beat Ramsey. You know, Mawa went and beat Dwight Morrow. Mawa beat us. Who knows, you know, what can happen. But all the games, all the scores are close, and no one's winning by 30 or 40 points. So every every team, it kind of is coming down to one of those things where it looks like which team doesn't match up well with somebody, and, you know, they could knock anybody off, that type of thing. So Yeah. Well, you're you're uh, you're back at it. You're four and three. I I did not panic when I saw the rough start. Uh, I don't think there was much panic around your program either. No. Uh, you guys are yep yep. So you're you're uh, right back where you need to be. And listen, if you win some games, you're going to be in the jambo. And I wouldn't be surprised to see you uh, up there at Ramapo College when that time comes too. But uh, until we get there, it's going to be fun to watch, and it's always fun to have you on the show. I know you got a busy schedule, so okay. thanks for carving sure. out a couple. Yeah, thanks for carving out a couple minutes for us here on Talk Hoops. Okay. No problem. Thanks for the confidence. I think I think you got a lot of confidence in us. It's good. So. <laughs> hey, listen, I've been there for the last four state sectional championships. Yeah. Yeah, you made man. me drive to Vernon to see you beat Ridgefield Park, and I did it. All right, That's I was there. <laughs> you were. <laughs> you get right, you're getting more and more pressure from those stands. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah it is. It, <laughs> good thanks. stuff, Kev. Thanks a lot. Guys. Yeah, good luck going forward, and we'll we'll talk to you soon. All right, Joe. Well, that was interesting stuff there with Kevin Kirkby, and he brought up a point that I didn't even mention at the top of the show when I was touting the success of coaches that have appeared on uh, Talking Hoops already this season, we, I left out Mike Troy from Ridgewood, and as Kevin Kirkby mentioned, they only have one loss, so that's another guy. And it's true. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, I was at that Riverdale game. There are two sides to every coin, though, as we mentioned, the wacky things going on there in the uh, Big North Patriot division where all of those teams – and you look at uh, Pascal Kills, it was a huge win that could propel them forward against Riverdale. On the other side of it, Riverdale was coming off a huge comeback win against Mawa. Then they have a 10-point lead against Pascal Kills in the fourth quarter. They lose. It's topsy-turvy. And you, doing your due diligence, went out and got an interview with Ronnie Van Saters, the Riverdale head coach. I was right at that game, right at that game. And it was a big win for them uh, to come back. The only time that they led in the entire game was in that overtime. Believe it or not, yeah. we were behind Mawa all the way till the uh, the tying baskets. So it was, yes, it was a big win for Riverdale, and um, as you'll hear from the interview that we had with Ronnie, who I think is the first time that we've had him on the program. So. Joe, you're getting good at this. That is a perfect segue. Let's let's hear what you had to say with Riverdale head coach Ronnie Van Saters. Okay, here we are at Riverdale High School. If it's overtime, it's Riverdale. It's the, at least the last two games. We have uh, Mawa and we have the Pascal Kills game that we're going to talk about. I'm with uh, Ron Van Saters, which who is the first time, if I'm not mistaken, is the first time that you're on the NorthJerseySports.com. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Correct, Coach. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is your fir- fourth year? As fourth a- year. Okay. And, and the Mawa game really was a pivotal game because it brought your team uh, to three and three as far as the record is concerned. Is that correct? Correct. Coach, okay. Yes. And then you play past Cat Kills, which we'll talk about um, in the next segment. Um, looking at that, um, the Mawa game, it was, uh, was a game in which I think you fought yourself all the way back. And at one time you went on a 14 4 run to actually force the uh, overtime. Be, between you, between uh, Riverdale and Mawa, which seems to be a very good rival. you got some interesting rivalries uh, in your league. Would well, you want to make some comments on that? Yeah, you know, with the, to the Mawa game, they have, they got guys that could, that we had to concentrate on their guards because their guards are all good players. And when they got out to that lead midway through the third, which was 11, and then halfway through the fourth, they were up eight or nine. We had to do something to change things up a little bit. We threw some pressure at them, used a timeout or two to set that up. We were able to get a couple steals 
for layups. We got some good shots later in the fourth quarter that helped us get closer. They missed a couple free throws that kept us in the game. And then we were able to take those misses and convert them into some baskets on the other end. You're right. In fact, uh, the, uh, the uh, missed foul shots played huge. In fact, they were one for eight if I'm not mistaken, in um, in their foul yeah. shooting uh, at near the end of the game and into eight, actually into uh, overtime, overtime as well. Yes. Uh, talk about the pressure that you put on. What, did you extend the court? Uh, or we did basically you basically did a coach at half court. We trapped the first pass. We denied everything, so we were face guarding. We weren't giving up any help. We knew we had to get some steals, so we weren't giving any help. If someone went back door or they screened, we were switching every screen and face guarding, hopefully get a steal. And we got a couple in a row that led to some fast break transitions that led to some easy buckets that helped us make the comeback. And a couple of bad shot selections on their part, and you got yes. the rebounds. I mean, yeah. you know, that talks to the fact that I think your team only has one guy under uh, six foot. Most of you are, most of your players are at six feet, mm -hmm. or to no, no more than six two. I don't, I don't think. No, no, no. no. So now when we talk about the, uh, the. Uh, the steals, I thought there were two key steals when they tried to hold the ball when they were still ahead. And you had, uh, I think it was Coppola that you yeah. mentioned that, that stole at least one of them. And yes, Matt, Matt's had a very good stretch right now. The last three games have been very big. He's our sixth man, but he really is a starter minutes. He's our most athletic player, and he was able to get his hand on the ball, able to attack the rim. He can elevate, so he's able to get to the rim in two dribbles rather than three or four. Your most consistent outside guy seems to be Robertson. He's developed his game where I've been at least two or three games where he's a he's actually turned himself into a three point threat. Am yeah, I it's correct funny, about it's, that? It's funny yes. you say that because um, last year he was on JV with me, and uh, he was for the last few years he's been more of an inside guy, post present, could step out, hit the five foot or fifteen footer, and now all of a sudden I'm kind of questioning myself. Should we have had him sooner playing on the um, outside and shooting a three a little bit but uh this year he's really developed into a three-point shooter yeah. which is nice to see yeah. you know it's nice to see the way you two guys work together as well because uh, you're the jv and also probably his uh, right hand yes. man during mm -hmm. the during the games yeah. and uh, that's adam and then you're you're the head coach ronnie mm -hmm. how do you break down the full the, the 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 eight players that you have what grades are they in and do you have an even balance of yeah. the teams that we have four just, Four seniors that are role players that make layups, defend, don't turn it over on a, on a tremendously high amount. Rob D. Benedetto is one of the starters. The ball's in his hands a lot. And he's a JV player from last year. He's getting acclimated more and more. But he's been pretty consistent shooting the ball this year. And our other four juniors are where we get a lot of our scoring from. Uh, Mike Fasano, Connor Beltoff have both played varsity since their freshman year. And Coppola and Robinson have stepped up to be ex big scorers, extreme scorers in the first six, Good. seven games. Good. Now, you know, I want to jump back to the game itself, the Mawa game, and that uh, one statistic that stands out that would, be, would make every coach's highlight is the fact that you were 11 for 12 from the foul line. Okay, so now is that something that's something that's part of your game all the time? Was it was it something that you want to be able to uh, show the guys that they can do it? Uh, maybe that was something that that played into the last night's game, the past guy yeah, kills game. Well, Let's talk uh, about the Mawa one first, Mawa, if you don't mind. Matt's our best free throw shooter, and he was seven of eight. Robbie hit three in the overtime, and Connor hit two in the overtime. Um, to be honest with you, Coach, we have struggled at the free throw line. So that was something nice to see that the kids stepped up and hit them when they counted. It backfired on us a little bit last night. When well, you get, yeah. When it, you get to the Pascal Kills game, it kind of backfired on us last night. With this game making you 3-3, three and three, the Mawa game making you 3-3, three and three, I've seen three of the games that you've had. And um, this game, I thought, was uh, a game the Mawa game, the, the way that you won, it was the way you won the game. 
that was going to push you into uh, you know a good run for the rest of the season. You know, dep- whether it's whether it's in the league, whether it's in the state tournament, whether it's whether you make the jamboree or whether you you know whether you decide to enter the Bergen Invitational tournament. You know, things like that. I thought it was a really a breakthrough game. What did- and in, in terms of that, I think it was a tale of two different halves a little bit. After watching the film, you know, we played hard. We came out in the first half, played hard struggled a little bit but you could see the intensity and the fight that we played with especially when we went down 8-10 with like in the fourth quarter with maybe six minutes left to go you could see the intensity and the toughness and they just put it into another gear and I think that really uh, I think that, that's gonna help us because they came we they came out with that in Tills we played a great game for three and a half quarters Against Pascac Hills now. Yes. We're talking about the Hills game now. Right. Okay. Yeah, tell me about more of the Hills game, and uh, uh, if you don't sure. mind, you know, go to that. I, I wasn't at that game, but... Uh, you, Our you, intensity was great. You know, we were up 11 at halftime. We were up 10, 6, 5, 4. Four and a four. half minutes left. And, you know, a lot of our kids haven't been in that. So we were in it the night before the last game, but we weren't. We're not in it consistently. Yeah, Prescott Kills is because Kirkby hasn't lost. Uh, uh, they're again. in it all the time. They're in it. They're in a game in a game all the time. They're in the state tournament all the time. I don't. Th- I think they're undefeated. Undefeated in the the last three years uh, in the sectional yeah. uh, tournament. And yeah, that, that was correct? one of the pregame speeches because we have a lot of respect for them and Kevin and how he runs his program. And we knew that was a program, not a program changing win, but a win that would make notice for everyone. I think when people see the box score, they're going to be like after the Mawa game and that, that we're going to be pretty tough to beat as the year goes on. Once we get more acclimated to those late game situations, I think we could have a nice run. The loss hurt, but I think it could spiral into some good things. Well, you got two tapes to show them. It's yeah. a tale of two games, right? Absolutely. Using the term. So I th- certainly think you have a lot to show them, You know, from my personal mm-hmm. opinion, is that uh, there are a lot of positives. Uh, even even in that Pascac Hills game, and then that it's their it's their choice to end the games correctly. Right. So um, you know, I just want to change the topic now, the tone a little bit. Can you talk about Adam? You're you're on the uh, selection committee. You think you, uh, for the BIT? You think you could name a couple of teams that you feel um, could be BIT teams this coming year? Yeah, absolutely. Over the holiday break, probably in about. Three days I, I watched about 10 different games, kind of scouting some teams for us and just, just watching some games just because I enjoy it. But a couple teams that are in our side of the league that I saw that are probably, I would say, BIT eligible teams are Westwood, uh, Mawa, possibly. I know they're they're at four and three with their victory last night. Um, and, you know, hopefully they get into the jambo. But if not, you know, they'll definitely be a, a high seed in the BIT tournament. And in the other side of our league, you have. Uh, Richfield Park and Dumont, two teams that um, I saw that are probably BIT eligible. And then one team we beat, Bogota. Uh, we came back, nice comeback win for us, much needed win. Uh, but definitely a uh, BIT team, tough team. Um, you know, Mahoney's going to throw a lot of different defenses. And they have you. a player that's and out, then, if I'm not yes, mistaken, a nerdy shoulder. Right? Yeah, they have their best player, Danny Connors, out. Uh, who's a, an excellent player and you know I wish him the best and it's an unfortunate situation for him but uh, um, he was on the bench rooting them cheering them on acting as another coach for them and then the other team who can go kind of either way on the cusp is Bergen Tech who we lost to and their backcourt they have a very good backcourt and from what I understand the one guard is a sophomore who he he had 30, 35 against us, 19 in the first quarter, and he just went off. He was unconscious. He could stick it anywhere, and he's quick and he makes everybody uh, better around them. And what they have is they have an inside presence as well, six six kids. So you know they they're on the cusp of going yeah. either way. And obviously, I wish them the best, but. Yeah, yeah, their toughest some, road is in front of them, yeah. the, the teams that they have to yep. play down the road, mm-hmm. which are uh, Eastside, Kennedy, Hackensack, and Teaneck, and some of the other teams that are out in that other division. Well, listen, fellas, I really appreciate uh, for, from the uh, appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, this is our first time with you. We hope it's one of many. I don't know how many more games I'm going to see uh, Riverdale play, uh, uh, you know, other than tournament games now, because we have to make sure we see other uh, teams, which we've been able to do. So I want to thank both of you for taking the time, and uh, we wish you well. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much, it. Coach. Appreciate right. it. Very good. Right. Thank you. Well, Joe, good stuff there. 
with Ronnie Van Saters of Riverdale. And listen, they're in the mix, too, because they're a physical team. Uh, as you mentioned, Coppola, he was great against Pascal Kill, scored 29 points in that game. He was really unstoppable. He pull-up jumpers, mid-range jumpers, getting to the basket, fast-break baskets, and making three-pointers. So Riverdale's going to win a bunch more games this season, too. Yeah, I, I wonder whether uh, Ronnie was listening to Hollins over at the Nets where this kid Coppola's coming off the bench and uh, – just as the Nets, when they had a nice run going there, they were bringing some of their, their better ball players, Lopez and uh, and Williams, off the bench. So, uh, this kid Capola has really done a very nice job for them. And, uh, uh, you know, as he said in the interview, the chemistry of the team is uh, is very interesting because they have four juniors and four seniors, and they all play off one another. So, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens down the road. Yeah, and it's fun now, as I mentioned earlier, because it's the second layer of Bergen County basketball that we're talking about here. And listen, all these teams that we're talking about are all threats to make it to the quarterfinals of the the Bergen County Jamboree. I mean, any of any one of them can get hot because they're, you know, you have your 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 big parochials and you have your uh, traditionally tough uh, public schools, but there's always space. You know that that five, six, seven, or six, seven, eight, I should say, in that bracket, and those guys can make it there. I mean, Pascal Valley's done it. Pascal Kills, you know, Rampo is above that level now, but uh, you know, in years past, they've been though that that one striving to get there. And you got a whole bunch of these teams uh, jockeying for position right now. One of them, as we've mentioned, is Tenafly, first year under Jeff Kohler as the boys' head coach. And I was there when they beat Old Japan again. They were down seven in the fourth quarter, came back, made all the plays down the stretch, and then won in overtime. So uh, he's pumped up, and here's the interview I did with him after that game. Yeah, the execution of defense, and that's something that we've been preaching from the beginning from the, the coaches. But uh, like I told you, I mean, it, it, I, I'm happy about the, the way our offense worked at the end. I thought we could get to the rim, and they did. I mean, with Blake. He's a small guy. Yeah. Oh, he does it every game. I don't know how he does it, but he finds a way, and he finishes. That's one great thing. Normally they get there, and they get fouled. He finishes a lot, so it's it's awesome. And uh, but defensively, I thought was the key, especially at the last two minutes. I mean, I know we've let up a couple shots, but they don't miss. I, I think they didn't miss an open shot today, and that's pretty hard. You were better off putting them on the foul line where they couldn't make a shot. Yeah, we got lucky. When I scouted them, they, they, could, they don't miss 35 and 23, but that's the other guys that, you know, we got lucky today. But um, but we know how great a coach staff that is for the program. This is a tough team, and it's a good win for us. So What is your record now? We're 5-3. and three. Can you start to feel it? Big crowd, big game, overtime that's win, what, good Yeah, team. I mean, and the crowd's starting to feel it, too, with the with the right chance. I mean, it's funny. Like, I had to go over it with them today. And I'm like, Did you really? Yeah, I'm like, I, I was like, George, I'll give you a varsity letter. I'll do whatever it is. You've got to do the defense chance. you got to do it. And, and you know what? There was times that they knew, and, and that, they, we feed off that. And, and that's good. And that's something that volleyball and, bas- uh, volleyball and soccer had that in the fall, and, and hopefully we have that in the winter. Everybody wanted it's good for the community town. That's what they want. They want to come out. So yeah. hopefully this will bring them out, and hopefully they lead, knowing that you know it's a good program. They play hard. Joe, he's holding classes to tell them when to do the defense. Defense, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny too because he mentioned uh, Old Japan. You know, they they played them, and Old Japan after that game left at two and four. But they're not bad. Old Japan's a good team. They shot two of six from the free throw line in the in the uh, uh, overtime, which killed them. But they're right on the cusp. They played Teaneck down to the wire. They made a final of a holiday tournament, and they lost on overtime on the road at a good Tenafly team. So, you know, don't count out Old Japan as a team that can make a run, too. Who, who says they can't get out and win three, four, five in a row? Well, that's uh, that's why Jan- January is the month where people make the move one way or the other. And at that, yes. where January is, the, uh, is what I used to call the Jambo month. Yes, but now we're calling it BIT month because you're the co-host here on Talking Hoops, so. That goes first. <laughs> One more interview that I want to play. And, again, we haven't covered a lot of Bergen Tech basketball over the last uh, 14 years that NorthJerseySports.com has been in existence. But, you know, you caught up with their head coach, Michael Baker, at the holiday tournament early this season. I was, you know, impressed with what the things that he had to say. And then, you know, they were the opponent against Rutherford on Saturday, and they lost that one after a tough game against Passaic. Now, I wrote this in my story. Michael Baker didn't say this. I don't even know if he'd want me to say it. I've only met the man once. Uh, You know, very impressed with the things he had to say. But come on, NJSIAA. Can you get Bergen Tech out of a league where they have to play Eastside, Kennedy, Passaic, Passaic Tech in league games? I mean, it's hard to get into Bergen Tech. These kids are academically talented. 
talented, not necessarily athletically talented, although they are four and five this year and they're fighting as hard as they can. And a lot of it has to do with the attitude that Michael Baker has instilled in these team in this team because he had this freshman class when he was the fr- the senior class when he was the freshman coach, and now he's followed him all the way. This is his third year as the head coach, and he's doing a great job with them. But I mean, common sense says Joe that it, it's a different it's a different ball game that they're playing. Well, you know, we're hitting on a topic that uh, you know is is very difficult for uh, people to go out on a limb other than us. But uh, there are a lot of things that they need to do, and this is one of them. Um, they got to st- sit back and say, okay, their enrollment is this number, but, but their performance and and the number of participants is another number. And uh, it's just not common sense. It, 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 for some reason, um, it get, they get locked into, uh, you know, into one way of thinking. And, uh, you know, it's just going to have to be, it's going to have to be the school, like a Bergen Tech and administration, it's going to have to uh, wake them up and, and say, listen, um, we're all, we are an academic school. We're, luck, we're we're happy to get the athletes here, but we don't go out and say, "Listen, uh, we want you to be on our football team. We want you to be on our basketball team." These, these are kids that are going to the academies, which was designed by the county. It was designed for that purpose, and it's being lost in the shuffle. And the, and I think that these particular uh, Student athletes are being shortchanged because of the, of the lack of foresight by uh, the people. Either it's the Big North people or it's just NJSIAA. Somebody's got to be a voice for these kids. Yes, we need a rallying cry. And they're smart kids. They'll get the historical reference. No realignment without representation. I mean, we got to get them out of there. But here, this is the interview that I did with Michael Baker, and he touches. I touched on some of these topics with him too. No excuses. I mean, we had a tough game last night against uh, Passaic. We knew it was going to be a tough turnaround. You know, the the following day, we knew this was going to be a tough team. We knew they were going to scrap. Um, We just, you know, we went cold early. You know, um, they, 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 we we worked, you know, we we ran hard. We just didn't do enough. Didn't do enough. What is your record now? Uh, We are four and five. And, you know, listening to that interview that you did with Coach Delby, you know, you knew it was going to be rough, I mean, with yeah. the schedule that you guys are playing. But yeah. how about just trying to, you know, because you do some good things, you have some good pieces. How about mm-hmm. just saying, hey, we're not a bad basketball game there. No, we're not. We're not. And, I mean, you know, again, we, we just, we don't we don't succumb to, to excuses. Uh, we do have two seniors that are hurt. Um, they're about two weeks away from, you know, rejoining the program. But we thought we had some depth. We pulled up some younger guys to try and, you know, help them grow a little bit. Again, you know, a little trial by fire, but, you know, um, we are a good team. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, getting healthy again and then, you know, making a run, you know, in the next couple of weeks. How hard is it, you know, fighting against the, the Bergen type of thing? Because it's an academic school. Yeah. You know, oh. it's, it's not a rich tradition of no. basketball. You no. know what I mean? So, no. I mean, I, I knew that challenge coming in. How yeah. many years is this for you here? This is my fourth year. Okay. I, actually, this group of seniors I had uh, when I first started as a freshman coach and the following year they made me the head coach. Okay. Um, but um, but I mean I knew I knew that was a challenge coming in. I, you know I had to teach them not only uh, the game of basketball but teach them how to be athletes. And you know from from an experience standpoint or basketball basketball IQ standpoint, you know it, it comes with challenges. Cause like I said, you know for these kids, our kids' motivation is a little different. Academically, you know they do well enough academically where they're going to go wherever they want to go. You know they don't need basketball to get there. Yep. Um, so we try to approach you know just having a love for the game and a love to compete. So, you know, that's, that's, you know, what we're working with. So, I mean, it's, it's grown. I mean, where, from where I started to where they are now, it's, we've definitely seen some improvement. Gee, sounds like the uh, original idea of high school sports. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, exactly. it's, good, it, it's good to see. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's lost. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of places. Yeah. yeah. You know, all kids transferring in and out. Right, right, right. Like, we're not allowed to recruit. I mean, you know. Uh, we don't we don't get kids from out of the country or out of the state or anything like that. We we take what we have and we try to work with them and teach them. It's, I mean it's it's a love. I mean I honestly say everybody on my staff we love to teach. We love to work with kids and and our kids work hard. We it's not that they don't. We 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 know what we have. We know who we are. Um and just every day we try to get them just to give us to give us their best. Good dude, huh, yeah, Joe? Very nice. That's what it's all about. Sounds great. And it certainly is paying off for him. It, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just an almost an impossible task, to tell the truth. Yes, absolutely. Well, listen, it's an impossible task to get in everything that is going on around North Jersey basketball. So the only suggestion that I can make is that we do this again next week. Okay, that sounds good to me. Follow the leader.